this is something unique in that God is so great, Messiah is so great, awesome, that centuries before he came, it was foretold that he would come, not just only in prophecy of the prophets, but also in shadows, foreshadows. And one of the most amazing, deep, rich foreshadows of Messiah is found in the book of Genesis, in the story of the man called Joseph. The rabbis saw Joseph, even though before they didn't know about Yeshua, they saw Joseph as a foreshadow of who Messiah would be. So they called him, they called Messiah Mashiach ben Yosef, Messiah son of Joseph. That Messiah was going to be like the Joseph in Genesis, that it is, he'd be a foreshadow of Messiah's life. It's going to be, it's going to have some deep things in it, so open your mind and focus. Now we're going to see in this a prophetic revelation of, and also how all sorts of scriptures come together and it's going to unlock new dimensions of who Messiah is. I'm going to show you even a little bit of what the rabbis wrote, not that they knew, they didn't know what they were doing with this, but it shows you how real he is that they actually bore witness to Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, without realizing they were. Joseph, Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons, 12 sons. The first of his sons from Rachel was Joseph. Now, let's start up, because we already, we did one on this before we started it, so this is the second part. Genesis 37 and verse 12. Genesis 37, verse 12. Then his brothers went to pasture their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel, that's, that's Jacob, said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send them, send you to them. And he said, I will go. And then it says, he said to him, go now and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent them from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem. These are all places right now in Israel. Joseph now is with his father Jacob. His father Jacob says, I will send you to your brothers. See how they're doing. In Hebrew, it says to see what their shalom is. In Hebrew, if you say, how you doing, you know how you say that? You say, ma shalom cha. That's how you say it in Israel. Try it. Ma shalom cha. It means ma shalom cha. How is your shalom? What is your shalom? That's how you say, how are you doing? Same thing here. See how their shalom is. And so he goes. Okay, verse 15. A man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and a man asked him, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they've moved from here, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. When they saw him from a distance, and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. Okay, let's open where we are right now. He comes to see his brothers and they are now conspiring to murder him. Why? They're, they are jealous. Why? Because he appears to be the favorite of his father. And, he, and so they say, let us slay him. And it goes on, and throw him into one of the pits. And we'll say that a wild beast has eat, devoured him. Then let's see what becomes of his dreams. They said, here comes this dreamer. What are they talking about? Joseph had that dream. He had two dreams where he, he had a dream which could be taken as his brothers were going to bow down to him. And they hated that dream. Now, actually, it's going to come true because it's God. It's not Joseph. But they said, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's take care of it. And so they, they, he comes there. Now let's, now, let's go back for a second. Let's open it up. The mystery. What is this a picture of from the beginning? It's a father sending his son. Now, does that sound familiar as a believer? A father sends his son. That's the beginning of the gospel. That's the beginning of Messiah, of coming to earth. Jacob had fallen in love with Rachel, yet he was tricked into marrying Leah, if you remember. But it was his love for Rachel that, so it's, the, the, it's his love for Rachel that started the whole family. The whole family is based on his love for Rachel. Now, 
all the sons were coming from Leah and the others, but only one son at that point, the firstborn son, was Joseph. So Joseph, to understand this, is representing the love of Jacob for Rachel because he's the son of their union. He's the first one. So he is representing, he's like the bond. He represents really, he's the reason why the whole family is in existence because he represents the bond. He's the only one, then will come Benjamin. So he represents the cause of the family, the existence of that. And that's maybe why he was the fa he seems to be a favorite or the favorite. And that's why the sons, the other brothers hated him. So how does that, what does that have to do as a shadow of Messiah? One of the words in Greek, we said, we said Joseph was like the, was the reason or the cause of the family. He, he represented it. One of the reasons for cause or reason in Greek, in New Testament Greek, is the word logos. Logos. It is written in John, in the beginning was the logos, the word, which is the logos in Greek. All things came into being through him. And, and nothing came into being apart from him. And then the Logos, the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. Joseph represented the Logos of the family because he's the bond between the Father and the one he loved. So he's the bond and he's the shadow of Messiah. Messiah is the Logos of existence. In other words, we would not exist except for the Son. Now we're not talking about when you're born again. I'm talking about just existing. The Bible is saying that all existence came through Him. It came from the Father through the Son. Messiah is the link, is the bond between God and man, God and the creation. So through Him, everything came into being. He's the Logos. Not Israel came into being, humanity, the world, the universe. The Father. So here's the Logos. So Joseph is a representation of that. He embodies it. So Messiah is that. The Father in the story, in the account, sends his beloved son. He sends the logos into to the, the family. So a representation. What happens? God sends the logos into the world. He sends Messiah to us. He sends Messiah to whom first? His brothers. Just as Joseph was sent to his brothers, Messiah is sent to Israel and then to all of us. But Israel, it's, what is it written? In John, he came to his own but his own did not receive him. Same thing that happens with Joseph. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him. He gives, he sends, he sends his son to the brother, his beloved son to the brother, just as Joseph is. Messiah is sent on a mission. But the mission that Messiah is sent on is to die. So Joseph is going to his brothers, and he doesn't know it, but he's going to, without knowing it, he's a shadow. He's going to act, it's going to kind of reenact, it's going to act in advance, the death of Messiah. He's coming there to his brothers. Messiah, the Bible says God will send Messiah. Then it says Isaiah 53, it says, it says he will be cut off out of the land of the living. Daniel 9 says that Messiah will come and then he will be cut off. He will come to Jerusalem and then be cut off. Well, this is the earliest picture of that right here. Messiah, when they were going up to Jerusalem, he said to the apostles, he said, the Son of Man is going up there to be handed over to the Gentiles who will mock him, scourge him, and put him to death. Think of the parable that Messiah gave. He said, a man sent these, his servants to the vineyard, and the vineyard keepers rejected him. But finally, the man sent his own son to the vineyard. Remember that? He sent his own son, and what did they do? The vineyard keepers say, let's kill the son, and we'll have everything else. So this was a prophecy of Messiah's coming, and this is also the, it foreshadowed in Joseph. He comes to his brothers. It seems like he thinks everything is going to go well. He's wearing the coat of many colors or different translations or many, sl many sleeves, a, co a coat of authority, a coat of love that, that has been given to him by his fathers. But it's a representation because all the prophecies of the Messiah, this is something that Jewish people stumbled over. They said, well, if he's the Messiah, then he's going to rule the world. Well, that's not what it says. It says first, the first coming of Messiah, even the rabbis picked up on it. He's going to come to his people and he will be rejected. He will be despised. So in Isaiah 53, he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. And we esteemed him 
as struck by God. He was pierced through. He was afflicted. All this in Messiah. Some people tried to claim, well, this is talking about Israel. It can't be because this is Israel talking. It's Isaiah saying he died. He came for the sins of my people. That's Israel. It says in Zechariah 3, it's, or Zechariah 13, it says, Awake, awake, O sword, against my shepherd and the man who is my associate, says the Lord. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA.